Who wants to see the test of an LS3 carbon fiber adjustable intake manifold? Did I mention on one of the tests, we pull the top off and just let it run. When FAST introduced the LSX HR intake manifold at SEMA many years ago, they caused quite a stir because it was a revolutionary new design. It was very cool and it definitely looked the part. It was different than their LSXR intake, even the adjustable version offered for the LS3. Now, the thing that's cool about it is it is a low cost version of an intake that was already available and that was the Carbon TR version. Now, I haven't run the FAST manifold yet, but I have tested the Carbon TR version in my big LS3 intake manifold test. But for some reason I didn't include the results in that test so here they are right now in addition to that I didn't include another manifold so you guys get a bonus test that is the Edelbrock ProFlow XT now the thing I like about the ProFlow I should have included in the intake test because it does well but it does a lot of things like the other short runner manifolds it makes more power at the top it loses a little bit of power at the bottom the thing that was cool about the carbon intake but besides a chock full of carbon fiber goodness was the fact that I could remove the lid and I could remove the lid during testing so I could adjust the runner length which was cool I always like adjustable manifolds but we could go to wide open throttle I could pull the lid off and run the carbon TR as an IR manifold which was super cool so let's take a look these are nine results that should have been included in the big LS3 intake manifold test, or at least one of the two, either the EFI version or the carbureted version. And the reason that they weren't is because these were kind of unique combinations. And by that, I mean, when I ran that test originally on the LS3, I compared all of the EFI intake manifolds on a 6.2 liter, basically a cammed LS3 crate motor. Then I compared all the carbureted LS3 intake manifolds and compared them all to the factory intake on a larger 416 stroker. Now this combination, these were both EFI intake manifolds because we're going to take a look at both the uh, Carbon TR version and the Elbrock ProFlow intake. These are both fuel injected manifolds, but I ran them on the 416 that I ran all the other carbureted combinations on. So either way, I just wanted to make sure that I included these and I have to apologize ahead of time. There's not, there's no video of the engines running and unfortunately I don't have that. And that's what happens when you lose both your, the hard drives on both your desktop and your laptop computers, which I had backup stuff on. So I just don't have a lot of the video. In fact, in this case, I don't even have a lot of photos. All of the photos that I had were lost as well. I had a ton of photos of the inside, the intake manifold and all kinds of stuff. But I've had a lot of people bug me about doing a test on the fast, like, LSX HR intake manifold, and that's basically what this carbon TR is. So I wanted to get this video out so guys could take a look at what those intake, what that intake design does, because the carbon TR version is basically a, a much more expensive version of that fast intake manifold. So I want to show people what they do compared to other known stuff. You guys can kind of take a look and judge for yourself, see, see what you like. Plus, this carbon TR manifold is like super cool. It's chock full of ability good or <laughs> chock full of carbon fiber goodness, not ability goodness. That would be a different intake manifold. But the carbon fiber stuff is really cool. As a matter of fact, I was afraid to even handle it. I'm sure that this manifold costs more than I make in like six years, but <laughs> it was a fun test. That, but to be able to test this, I built a 416 stroker. And what that is, is basically an LS3 block that we bored and stroke. We went, we went to, to out to 4070 bore, and then we installed a four inch stroker crank. All that stuff came from the, the, the crank and the rods came from the guys at K1. And then we also installed Forge Wiseco flat top pistons with valve relief so we could run enough camshaft in it. And speaking of camshaft, our cam was a stage four cam from Brian Tooley Racing. It was a 623-596 lift split, a 247-258 degree duration split, and 113 degree lobe separation angle. We used standard travel lifters in this and hardened push rods. We topped this thing off to make sure that we had enough airflow, obviously, for this combination and for the intake manifolds. Obviously, we didn't want to restrict it with cylinder heads because we wanted the intake manifold to ultimately be the restriction in our test. We equipped it with a set of Airflow Research LS3 heads, which we know work really well. We've done lots of testing on those. And then I ran the, the basically the different intake manifolds. And we started off with a factory LS3 intake. We also had inch and seven eighths headers on this. We had a Holly HP management system on the fuel injected stuff, obviously. And then when we ran it carbureted, we ran the other carbureted stuff. So we tuned this thing and it worked really well. And so we equipped with the factory LS3 intake manifold and a 92 millimeter throttle body. And I get asked all the time, well, why don't you run a 102 millimeter throttle body? Because when you step the throttle body up, 
from the opening in the manifold, it's still only going to flow as much as the opening in the manifold does. And I, yeah, we could port the manifold, but what I wanted to do is run it in comparison to a basically stock known LS3 intake manifold. So R416 equipped with the factory LS3 intake manifold and the 92 millimeter throttle body made 627 horsepower. We had a nice torque plateau as we've come to expect from the LS stuff. 568 foot pounds of torque. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed the um, carbon TR intake and then we'll follow that up with the ProFlow intake. Our final test was run on the Elbrock ProFlow intake and if you've taken a look at any of the other intake tests, especially the cathedral port intake test that I posted on that video or the stories that are up online, you'll see that the ProFlow and the HiRAM are almost identical. And I haven't tested the LS3 versions back to back, but I would assume given the similarities of the two intake manifolds, both from their relative to their cathedral port uh, combinations and, and the LS3 stuff, I think that you're probably gonna get similar power curves. But here, let's take a look and see. This is our uh, 416 with the factory LS3 intake manifold. Here's what happened when we put the Elbrock ProFlow on there. And it did what we have seen on most of the other short runner intake manifolds. It loses power down low, gains peak power at the top. It produced 655 peak horsepower, um, started making more power than the factory LS3 at 5800 or 5900, let's call it 5850, <laughs> where the crossover is, um, and made less down low. You know, and, and down here we saw some fairly substantial torque changes, 557 foot-pounds versus 497 foot-pounds, so 40 foot-pounds, quite a bit. So, you know, it just depends on where you want your power. If you're going to run this thing to 8,000 RPM, run it from 6 to 8,000, then a short run manifold like the ProFlow, probably a good idea. Um, if it's more of a street motor, you know, you'd have to decide, hey, look, this thing makes the factory LS3, makes more power all the way up to 6,000 might be a better choice. Again, that's up to you guys, but I know that everyone's wondering, well, how does the ProFlow compare to the the carbon TR intake? Well, let's take a look at that. That's the ProFlow. This is our carbon TR intake, and as you can see, the carbon TR um, <laughs> lost out just a little bit by one or two horsepower out at the very top, out at 7,000, but was basically better than the ProFlow through all the rest of the curve, you know, and in, in some of these spots, we're looking at a difference of 544 foot-pounds versus 571 foot-pounds. So, you know, a pretty decent amount of torque down here at 4,100. It's 496 versus 525. So, you know, that's a pretty good amount of torque. And you definitely feel that and you definitely see that probably at the drag strip. Unless you were only running from 6,000 to 8,000. In which case, short runner might be a good idea. Let's get to our conclusion. After running our 416 stroker with the factory LS3 intake manifold, it was time to install the carbon TR version. And unfortunately, I don't even have an inside shot of the manifold to show you how it's adjustable, but the lid is removable and there are basically stacks that you put in there. Kind of like if you look at the fast thing that has different um, interchangeable runners. This one actually has um, removable sections for the runners that has radius entries that you could put in to extend the length. You can't change them dramatically, but what I did was um, went to all the way long and all the way short, even though that difference was only, you know, just a couple of inches. But it was an interesting comparison. I like the manifold. It was cool looking. Obviously, the carbon fiber lid is super cool. But I would be so worried about just <laughs> scratching it or ruining it because all of my other stuff is junkyard stuff. But here's what happened when we put the carbon TR version on with the longest of the available runners. You can see that it did indeed pick up quite a bit of power. Our power output jumped from 627 horsepower to 653 horsepower. And as we have come to expect, if you take a look at the, any of the intake tests, the LS3 intake tests, either, either uh, fuel injected or um, carbureted, you'll see that the same kind of thing happens. The factory LS3 manifold makes really good power for most of the curve. And in this case, it's better than the carbon TR version up to 4,900 RPM. And we've come to expect that because of the added runner length offered by the LS3 intake manifold. But then the carbon TR actually does very well because if you look at some of the comparisons on the LS3 intake test, some of those manifolds only make more power than the factory LS3. You know, some of them only above 6,000 RPM. So this was kind of a, a good compromise and it worked pretty well, made good power. 
Now let's take a look and see what happened. Here's an interesting thing. What we did was took all the runner length away from it and just ran the shortest runner. That's now in red. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to give you, uh, I'm going to get rid of the stock manifold here. So this is the long runner and the short runner. And the long runner is now in red and the short runner is in blue. And you can see the short runner basically just lost power everywhere. It wasn't better than the longer runner at any RPM range. Now, maybe if we ran this thing to 8,000 RPM, we might start to see something. But basically, the short runner version was just not good for this combination. Up to 7,000 RPM, the longest runner that that carbon TR thing offered was the best combination on this motor. It worked out pretty well. So now let's take a look at one other thing. I'm going to get rid of the short runner version. Now let's take a look and see what happened. What I did was, because the lid was removable, I basically set the lid on top and then <laughs> held the lid in place, had uh, what, Steve or somebody go to wide open throttle, and then I just basically lifted the lid off. So, uh, because after trying to lift the lid off while the thing had vacuum on it, while it was at part throttle, really hard to do. <laughs> Once you go to wide open throttle, there's zero vacuum, the lid just lifts off. So I lifted the lid off, and what that does is basically open the intake manifold, and, and basically you have an individual runner, basically a stack injection, intake manifold. And this is what happened when we did that, when we converted it from a common plenum to a stack injection. I'm having some technical difficulty here. Open. Okay, so the blue is the individual runner, and as you can see, if you take a look down here, we lost power compared to having the common plenum with the IR deal. We picked up a little bit of power here between 4,000 and 4,500, started losing a little bit, then started gain gaining a little bit between five and 5,000, and then picked up a little bit of peak power out here at the very top. The peak power checked in at 660 horsepower, so not a huge change given the fact that the runner length is basically the same. All we've done is get rid of the common plenum. So it was an interesting test on the carbon TR intake. So now let's find out how well the Elbrock Pro flew. Okay guys, what'd you think about our test run on the carbon TR adjustable intake manifold? First of all, it's chock full of carbon fiber goodness. So right off the bat, it's awesome. I like the fact that it was adjustable, but I also like the fact that we could remove the lid and run it as an IR intake, which made the most power. The other thing I liked was running that Elbrock ProFlow XT intake manifold. As we saw from the Dyna results, both of those intake manifolds, short runner designs, make more power at the top of the RPM range compared to the factory LS3 long runner intake manifold, but they do sacrifice power down low. And that was kind of the trend in all of the intakes when I ran the big LS3 intake shootout. Now, the cool thing is that carbon TR intake fast offers a more affordable version of that, which should prove to be equally powerful, but I won't know until I test it. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'm going to keep on testing.